Hey guys, it's Hoppy Shadow Beats here and welcome back to my channel. This is part two to my little craft series on how to make a bakery slash cafe. Yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. We have our clipboard, we have our little bread menu, we have this screen thing, and then we have the whole like box setup thing. So now we're gonna work on the actual tables and then we'll start working on the kitchen or like the bakery place where you bake stuff basically. Basically, yeah. Okay, so I found a way where you can actually see what I'm doing now. That's really good. Okay, so you're gonna get some more cardboard. I have some cardboard in the background as you can see. You're going to have to measure the size you want your table to be. So I'm just gonna grab my LPS right here just to see how big I want the table. Okay, so I kind of want the table around that big. I just like sketched it on and you can't really see the markings so now I'm just gonna thicken the marking, mar mark, mark, marking, mark, marking, markings, markings. Did I say it right? I don't know. So there we go. And I made it curve a little bit as well, just to make it a little nicer. And now I'm just gonna cut it out. Now that I've finished cutting that, I'm just gonna make it even more even now. So just fix up the edges a little bit. And then and then we'll be done with the first table and then we need to make some more. I'm gonna make around five or four more. Okay, so I've made six in total. I basically just traced them and some of them I just did in freehand. So yeah, so now you're gonna get what you want your tables to be. I'm gonna use the same thing that I did for my little desk thing, that kind of paper. You're gonna cover all the tables with the fabric, oh, not fabric, but the paper, and I'll show you guys what to do next. So I'm back and I covered all of these. So now you're gonna need some beads. I've got a whole box of beads. I'm just gonna fish out a couple. I have multiple of beads, beads, like these yellow beads. So I'm gonna get some of those. I'm gonna get three for each table. Basically you need 18 beads in total. Yeah, you can do how many beads you like, like as much as you want. I just want to do three for now. I'm not sure it's going to be the right height or not. I'm sure that it should be like an okay height. If not, then that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stick these beads onto the tables, but like under here, like so, put it in the middle and just stack the beads. Okay, so that's how tall it'll be. I think that's the right size. So I'm gonna just uh, put that upside down and continue. Okay, so now they're all stuck down and now I'm gonna put glue on here and stick them in all the places I want the tables to be. Make sure not to press too hard when you stick on it or else it will fall. If it does, the beads will collapse. If it does, then you can just stick them back on again and it'll be good. And I'm using rubbers right now just to hold it in place and help it stay. Also make sure not to put any where the wallpaper changes because that's where the kitchen or the like where they're gonna bake the goodies are gonna be. So yeah, just put them in the other areas. While the tables dry, we're going to start working on the kitchen counter for the bakery part. We're gonna need some more cardboard. I'm just gonna go check to see if it's around the same size as the wallpaper, just to check. And it is, it's just a little bit smaller, but that's fine because we need a little bit of space anyways. So now we're gonna make the bottom part. So I'm gonna measure like how long this is and just mark it. So it's around here. And I'm just gonna estimate, like just mark with a ruler like how long I want the counter to be. Okay, so now I've marked it and drawn a line, so now I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, so now we have two pieces. We have the countertop and then this is the this is the counter bottom. Now we need to decide. So I'm gonna measure how tall this is. It's around that much, so just mark it. And then the width. Is it the width or it is the width? I don't know how long this is. So just mark it like that. And then you're just gonna mark and cut again. I'm going to repeat this process twice. So now I've finished cutting, so we have uh, the bottom of the counter, the top of the counter, and then the sides. So now I'm gonna stick that together with my tacky glue or PVA glue. So this is what it should look like. It should like hang over a little bit. 
and then have these two supporting it. This can go over a little bit because that's what it's supposed to do. So now we're gonna cut a little bit more cardboard. So we're gonna measure how large this is again. And then I'm just gonna mark how much I want to cut and then cut and make sure it is straight and even on both sides so we can hang flat. So that's what I would do. Now I'm going to cover, since it's, most of it's all white, and cover this top bench. I'm gonna cover it, actually I might leave it this color because it's actually an okay color. I might just cover this side just to match the other sides. So I'm just getting some paper and then gluing it on there just to match so it's white. And now I'm gonna stick this over there. Starting with this piece that we cut off earlier. Apply glue to both sides and also the bottom. And then you're gonna just stick it on the edge and just push it against the wall like that. And now we're gonna apply glue here, this side, all the way bottom there and this bottom as well. Okay, so now I'm going to place it in. So I'm gonna match this side to that cardboard piece that we stuck in already and just push down once we match it up. And then now I'm gonna get my brush and just patch it together just to like help it like, stick together more. Apply glue down here as well just to cover up the holes because it might not be straight and stuff. All right, so now I'm gonna cut a bit more counter around here and measure it so it's a similar size to this one and put it over there. I went ahead and applied glue to one of the sides and also applied glue there. And then now we can just stick it on. Make sure to match the table up with this one so it looks like it's together. As you can see, there's a little bit of a chip there, just ignore that. And I'm gonna use my brush and just stroke along this line. This will dry later, so it's fine. It dries clear and just like smooth it out a little bit, just so it helps it to stick together more as well, like I said. That countertop is done. Okay, so now we're gonna build the show case thing. So where we're gonna keep all the bread. So we're gonna need uh, some clear plastic like this. You can find it anywhere really. It's just like plastic packaging basically, kind of. What we're gonna do is we're going to measure it by comparing it to the size of an LPS. So that's my mascot. And I'm using my scissors to measure. And it has to be just slightly above the eye. The reason why it's the eye is because you just don't want it too tall for the LPS. You just want it, the LPS to just see it. If you don't have a dashed LPS, just use an, another short LPS and try. Like you can use those like mini LPS. I forgot what you call them. Like or an LPS, an LPS triplet. You can just like do it up to the head. Okay, so now we have our clear plastic. We're gonna fold it. We need to fold one end and the other end. So we're gonna first gonna fold this end. Just fold it anyhow. It has to be like a little bit short. You don't fold too much, just a little bit. And then the same to the other side, like so. So now it stands. Then you're going to get that um, piece of plastic that we used earlier. Just measure, just see hmm, uh, how much can I cut so it, this plastic can fit in. Um, I'm going to just cut around here. We're going to want to stick it in the middle here. And we're going to have to make a, si a similar one to put on top. Also make sure the width is the same. So if the width isn't the same, you see it's like poking out a little bit. I, can't, I don't think you can see that, it's really clear. Just trim it and then you're gonna apply glue and to um, three of the sides. Mine's a little short, like my shell, but that's fine. No one's gonna see it anyways, it's clear and stuff. So it's fine. So it's gonna stick like that. Oops. So you're gonna put it in the middle like that. And then at the top one, you're gonna, mine's also a little short, but that's fine too. And we can just stick it on top like that. But this time we're gonna put it not on the edge, we're gonna put it on the inside. Make sure it rests 
on the top of the plastic. It should look something like that. My glue does dry clear, so if your glue doesn't dry clear, please like check if your glue tr um, tr dries clear. How you can check, you can get a big dollop and just put it on like a piece of, t like, piece of, piece of tissue, just like a scrap, something from the rubbish bin or something, and just see if it's clear and let it dry it overnight to see if it's clear. If it's not clear, go get clear glue and then you can do this. Now I'm gonna apply glue to the bottom of this and stick it on the counter. This part you can choose anywhere you want to stick on the counter. It's up to you really, but you have to do it on the front, not the side counter. Just to help it stick more, I'm gonna apply some glue here and to all the sides and then leave it to dry. If you notice something is falling, like the shelf is falling, you're gonna want to grab something that is around the same size. So, and I'm just gonna slide it underneath there. Just help it like stand up. I changed it to these nail charm things. It helps too. Now when that's drying, I'm going to make a cashier. How you make the cashier is gonna be similar to how you make the device thing. This black thing here, yeah. I don't know what you call it. First, you're gonna just measure how big you want your thing to be. I'm gonna cut it. Is that how big? the screen bit of my cash register is gonna be like and then this is gonna be the bottom bit so it's gonna be like an off shape like so Ooh, wrong way i'm gonna repeat what i did for this side to the other side now i'm going to cut these sides at an angle it doesn't matter how your angle is gonna be just cut it at an angle now we're going to build the front part first we're gonna stick at the top this is like some leftover and it fits exactly. You just wanna do that basically. So yeah, I'm just gonna glue it on. Everything's drying now. I'm gonna try make the front things. And this is gonna be the screen now, the front of the cash register. We're gonna just measure and cut that shape. And now I'm gonna stick it on. I also added this strip there just to like hide the the gap between this and the top yeah that's the base of the cash register now we just need to oh that's i need to cover that bit bit but now we just need to paint it i'm gonna paint it in black i finished painting now i didn't paint the bottom because why not because no one's gonna see it anyways so yeah i'm gonna need this to dry now and then when it finish drying i'm gonna stick it on the counter i'm gonna put it over here right next to the display and then there i'm going to cut out circles on paper and stick them on there. My tactic of cutting multiple circles in just like a few minutes is I fold a piece of paper many times, cut a circle, and then it'll come out with many. You can stick how many you want, but I just stuck it like that. And now I'm gonna make a sign that shows how much it is. I just used a piece of paper and I wrote a random number, so I just wrote $10. I'm gonna let everything to dry now. Hey guys, so it is the next day in the morning now. So that's why my voice might be a little bit crusty or anything like that. That's because of that. Anyways, so now everything is dry. As you can see, I've taken away all the supports, like the rubber and the thing that was there so now the next step we're gonna do is make a menu to put over there so yeah let's get started to make the menu you can either choose to find a image on the internet and print it off like that or you can make it by hand which is what i'm gonna do so you're first gonna need some paper i'm gonna measure like how big i want it by placing it beside the wall it's gonna be on so i'm gonna put it on here like that and i'm just gonna measure so i decide to go along with this size and i'll measure it for you guys for um anyone who wants to wonder how like what the dimensions are that i chose it is around five meters in height and then around 6.2 centimeters in length. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your marker and get another piece of paper. So I'm just gonna grab a little scrap I have here. And basically you're just going to use your marker and just outline the edges. You can make them as thick as you want. And then you just wanna do that for all the sides. Okay, so I finished outlining the edges with the black marker. And now I am going to write menu just at the top here. You could do it in any font you really want. 
mine's off center but it doesn't really matter it doesn't really bug me but if it does bug you then you can like measure it and put it into center now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna write different categories you want on your menu so for example i wrote drinks underline it and write some lines and then i'm gonna put little price signs here write random numbers that you want the drinks to be and then you're gonna do that for the different categories Okay, so my menu's a bit cramped, but it's honestly fine. You want your menu to be like crowded and stuff. A drink section, a food section, a bread section, and a snack section. And then I wrote in the corners, all freshly baked. Ask to remove certain things if wanted, because like if you have allergies or certain things, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's really up to you what you want your bakery menu to have. When you're done, now what you're gonna do is you're going to apply glue at the back. And then you're gonna place it on the wall where you want it. Okay, now it's stuck on. I made sure like to put it in the middle between the cash register and this display case thing. It's easy to see. I'm gonna make a little back door to put over here. To make the back door, you're also gonna need some more paper. I'm gonna trim it to the size that I want the door to be. You might wanna measure it beside your LPS. So in height, my door is around seven centimeters, 4.8 centimeters. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to get your marker and you're gonna draw where you want your door handle to be make sure it's not too high make sure it's not too low i'm just gonna put it around the middle your door handle can either be a circle or like this door handle i don't know like what you do but yeah either draw it on or you can use like a bead stick it on i'm just gonna draw it on it's easier for me and when you are happy with your door handle you're gonna flip around and you're gonna do the same on the other side and because we used marker it went through so you know where your circle is gonna be so it's accurate all right so once you're done with your door i'm gonna make a little box i'm gonna use a pencil in here i'm just gonna write stuff only and then I'm going to outline the edges of the box. And because we use pencil, it's easier to just mark out where we did it. And then when uh, you're happy with the markings, you can just rub the pencil off. It might smudge a little bit, but that's honestly fine. If you are worried that it's going to smudge like mine, you can leave it to dry and then raise the markings later. So now I'm going to go ahead and place my staff only door where I want it. I want my staff door to open to make it more like realistic and stuff. So I just applied some sticky tack or a blue tack at the back here. You don't want to use too much a sticky tack or blue tack because then it'll make the door a bit lumpy and it doesn't look very nice. But I'll show you what I meant by like it can open easily. Now we're gonna make a little spool to put over here because if you use like a collie or something or any LPS, it's very short, you can't actually see anything. So I'm gonna make a stool so it's around here and it will be easier to see the pets when you're filming and stuff. Get some cardboard. You're going to need something circular. I'm gonna use my tape because it has like a circle what you're gonna do is you're going to just place it on the cardboard and you're gonna trace and then now you're gonna cut it out if your circle like mine is not very circular it has some points you can always fix it by just cutting around it and making the edges more smoother once you like your circle you're going to want to check if your lps fits on it doesn't have to be like exactly fit on it but it must like fit at least some of the lps on it now that you have your circle you're going to need some foam a fabric of your tours or paper whatever and a empty tape thing i don't know what you call this but yeah you can either use like a bottle cap as well it really depends on what you want but yeah i'm gonna use an empty tape thing so what you're gonna do is you're going to glue this to the cap you're going to cut out some foam that is around the same size of your circle how you're gonna do that you're gonna get your foam and then your tape Thing. and you're just gonna put it in the foam and just press down and lift up and then now there's gonna be an imprint you can also trace it onto the foam but i'm not really bothered to do that so i'm not gonna do that i'm not sure if this is star it's not star foam this foam it's like i don't know how you explain it but it's like a spongy foam you can find this like when like you have something like very fragile in like a package or something you can find it if you don't have it then you can either you just use like some tissue and something and just stack it up or you just need something spongy you can skip this step if you want you don't have to do this i just want it to make my seat more spongy it's up to you now i'm going to stick this onto the circle like that 
Okay, so if you didn't do the styrofoam step, now is your time to follow what I'm doing now. So you're gonna get your fabric or whatever you want your seat to be covered in. I'm gonna use the same paper that I use for the tables here. I don't know what you call the fabric, but yeah. You're going to stick this to uh, the bottom of this. Okay, so now you're going to apply glue to the sides press down on the seat and you're gonna just like pull up the paper as much as you can be careful not to rip it i'm just gonna stick it onto the seat and you're gonna do that for all the sides so it covers the entire chair if it's like this you basically bend over and you just stick again if you want you can cover the entire thing but i'm just gonna cover the front because that's all you're gonna see anyways and if there's excess you can just trim that off your chair should look something like this now i'm going to stick to this chair in place you don't have to stick it if you don't want to i'm just gonna stick it because it's easier you're gonna make sure the place where it's not covered is facing the back so you don't have to see it and i'm just gonna place it in the middle between the cash register and the display if you guys don't have a empty tape roll then you can always use like some cardboard and just cut this into strips how long they are is like how tall you want the chair to be and then you're gonna cut like around four or three it doesn't matter how much and then you're gonna just like stick it outwards so it's like all pretend this is the top of the chair so you're gonna like just stick it all around and then just let it to dry and then you could stick it down Okay guys, so that is the end of part two. Part three is going to be about like how you put the food and just decorating the whole cafe. And then we're gonna start working on the outside of the cafe as well. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit that button notification to get notified on when I post videos and get notified on when I post the third part to this craft series. Liked to let me know you enjoyed this and I'll be sure to make more series crafts like this one. And comment down below if you know you're liking how this is going so far and if you have any questions comment down below and i'll be sure to answer them for you go check out my instagram my instagram is lps Beats. i am mainly active on there and also my website which is lps jazzybeats.weebly.com i post updates on there as well but i'm not as active on there anymore but i am more active on instagram so if you guys want to dm me or ask me questions on there i am happy for you to do so i will answer all your dms i hope you guys enjoyed the video again love you guys so much and i'll see you guys next time in part three bye